So this is what our spacesuit gloves look like. You know, they can tell they're kind of bulky, but that's because, as you mentioned before, spacesuits, they have to have function before form, really. And so you guys can touch that if you've never seen one of these guys before. I have, indeed. Does that look they're familiar? Yeah. How heavy the damn thing is. But that's partly yeah. because it's the different layers. Wow. So th when you think about a spacesuit, the first thing you have to do is you have to keep an atmosphere around your body. And so that's what the bladder does. It holds all the air inside the spacesuit. So you have something to breathe and keep pressure on your skin. All good things. Ah. How does it seal? So there's a bearing that goes into the bolt hole pattern here, and then that connects to the lower arm of your spacesuit. And so it swivels around so you can move your wrist. And then on top of that, you have what we call the restraint layer. And so this is the part that keeps the shape of your glove and has all the mobility. You can see the rings down here that allow your wrist to rotate uh, on the top part of your wrist and bend back and forth. And then each of the fingers are sizable, so everybody has a custom glove. So then, these are all in that, right? Yep. All these layers. These two go on bottom, and then you put your protective layer on the outside. So this is the thing that protects from all that sharp lunar dust, as well as the temperature extremes when you're outside. So it has all your thermal insulation. So it's kind of like another mitt, I guess. Very sophisticated one. May I ask some questions? So no, thanks. I, obviously, the <laughs> Apollo missions. <laughs> The Apollo missions, they all look like, you know, they're sort of like Michelin men kind of outfits, right? Yeah. How, how, we, we tried to project some measure of miniaturization or at least less sort of bulky. Uh, have you made a lot of progress in that way or do they still look kind of like hugely inflated? I mean, I, I... I think they look rather svelte, personally. Svelte. Uh, <laughs> so when we look at those suits, a lot of what it is, is we've learned about how to design the suits to make them more mobile. Right. And so as opposed to having the cables and the pulleys that you have underneath all the white stuff on the Apollo suits, we have, actually have hard elements that make it a, easy to move all of your joints, so it's very graceful. You can kneel down instead of fall down to pick up a rock, things like that. So they right. still look look big, right? Uh, but they're actually much smaller, much easier to move in than they were in Apollo. Wasn't there that thing where uh, Charlie Duke kind of did like a dip or something and almost tore his suit? Um, I don't know about tearing the suit. He got really scared about that or something like they were really, Charlie Duke was one of the Apollo astronauts. He said, I clearly don't get out very much. <laughs> um, but, he, but he apparently did some dip and he was, I read somewhere that he was worried about, are these, these, are th is this a different material than the yes. Apollo mission? Yep. Yeah. What's, what's the difference? What is this? So this is what we call orthofabric, and then the prior Apollo suits, it was a beta cloth. And so this is much more durable, just based on the blend of materials that actually go into the fabric. So it's a lot more cut resistant than you would find on the old Apollo suits. And so the Apollo suits, yeah, the outer layers, they definitely wore through those, and they gummed up all their bearings, and it was hard to move the wrists. These are things that we've learned from that program. And so when you look at our next generation of spacesuits, we're not going to have those problems, hopefully. Right, you're constantly, and, and I, I would imagine you're getting feedback from the, from the astronauts themselves, what worked, what didn't, what could be more comfortable, I'd like to be able to kneel to pick up the moon rock and not fall. Yeah, that's the great thing about exploration, it's not defined, you can't just say, I know I'm going to go outside, I'm going to pick up seven rocks, and this is exactly the way I want to pick them up every time. So it's not designing a machine in that sense, it's still designing a garment, and so we have to think about that. And doing a lot of stuff that you would see in movies with like green screens, where you have the little Vicon system and the dots all over your joints where they make video games. We do the same thing is to learn how people move and learn their movement patterns to design our spacesuits around that. Fascinating. Do you ever get ideas from the movies? I think our team is all inspired by different things. Uh, that means no. Well that put, Lindsay no. Aitchison. Well played. <laughs> I don't know. There are certainly things that I've seen. I'm like, oh, dude, wouldn't that be awesome to have? But I mean, more things like, do you remember that dress that was on the VMAs where she had the text messages that were scrolling along her skirt? Obviously, we don't need that, but it'd be kind of cool just to have that embedded into the fabric of your space where you could look down and see messages from the guys somewhere else along the lunar surface. You can text each other back just on your spacesuit fabric. I think that'd be awesome. Well, I'll tell